There are more than 400,000 NCAA student athletes. NCAA on campus is their story. Hey everybody, I'm Stacy Pates and welcome to NCAA On Campus. On each episode of our show, we share with you the stories of the outstanding young men and women who make up the NCAA. Today's story is truly inspiring. Two years ago, Jeremy Gant was 19, an award-winning bodybuilder and an NCAA student athlete on the golf team at Newman University in Wichita, Kansas. Jeremy looked like a million bucks, but felt awful suffering from shortness of breath. And when he went to the doctor, the news wasn't good. For our story, we go on campus at Newman with golfer and sports communication major, Kendall Anderson. Thanks, Stacy, and welcome to Wichita, the largest city in Kansas and the air capital of the world, home to Cessna, Beechcraft, and Lear. My school, Newman University, appropriately nicknamed the Jets, was founded here in 1933. The school is named in honor of 19th century English theologian and educator, Cardinal John Henry Newman, who was beatified in 2010 by Pope Benedict. Newman University has about 3,000 students and is a fairly new member of the NCAA. We joined just six years ago and are a part of the Division II Heartland Conference. We are a Catholic university and our slogan is, educating the mind, inspiring the spirit. My friend Jeremy Gant has inspired many of us here at Newman and everyone who knows his story. Growing up, I never knew anything was wrong at all. Um, I went to allergy doctors, and you know they said I just had allergies um, and, and I had asthma. When he came back for his sophomore year, the day before school started, he was complaining that his heart just felt like it was about to beat out of his chest. I was walking up the stairs moving in sophomore year, and I was sweating, just covered in sweat just didn't feel good and I knew there was something wrong and when I'd lay in bed at night um, my heart would make you know weird beats um, and so I knew something wasn't quite right but I just I'll, I said look at me you know I'm in perfect shape there can't be anything wrong so I just ignored it until the point where I had to do something they did x-rays which said my heart was enlarged but the echocardiogram determined that my heart was functioning at 10% um, so they did some more testing, heart casts, and to, to try and see if I could have a valve replacement surgery. But it turned out that there was no way they could have got my heart to maybe functioning at 20 or 30 percent, but that's not enough. So they said a heart transplant is your only way to survive. In a 24 or 36 hour period, he went from just um, being a normal, healthy kid uh, to, wow, um, this is what we've got and what we have to face. So it was a tough deal, tough deal for the, especially for Jeremy, but his parents, uh, his teammates, uh, you know, Newman is a small, everybody knows everybody's school. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a tough deal on everyone. I can still remember the, the day and time. I was with my mom and my dad was back at the hotel and uh, I was laying in my hospital bed and the doctor comes in with some, it just something didn't seem right. And it was the last thing I would ever expect. But he came in and said, you know, he sat down and he said, son, he goes, I have some bad news. And he said, you're gonna need a heart transplant to survive. And if you don't, I'll give you less than a year. And I'm just like, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Honestly, I just started crying, you know, hugged my mom called my dad and told him to get here as soon as he could. Um, and words really can't describe what went on. It was pretty crazy. Jeremy Gant was on the list, along with about 3,000 others, waiting for a heart to become available. The average wait can be six to nine months. Jeremy got his phone call 28 days later. You know, I took the call, hello, and they go, Jeremy, this is St. Luke's, and my heart just immediately stopped. And they're like, uh, we just got the call. We have a heart for you. We need you to uh, come to St. Luke's immediately. Well, they prepped me for the surgery, uh, put about three IVs in my arms, told me what was gonna happen. And I was just, I was scared. I was excited. I really didn't know what to do. Um, my surgeon walked in and it was about one in the morning. He's like, you know, everything's gonna be fine. You know, I'm just gonna take your heart out. I'm gonna put the new one in and you're gonna be back in no time. And I'm just like, Okay, yeah, this sounds real easy. 
I remember waking up from the anesthesia in the surgery, and I think it was like a day or two after the surgery. I had a tube coming out of my mouth. I had four tubes in my stomach, and tubes in my arms. Just, um, it wasn't a pretty sight. It hurt to breathe. It was just so much pain, unimaginable. I don't remember a lot, but I do remember my team, and I could see all of them. Um, they just got back from a tournament, and they were, I could see them through the glass, just kind of looking in, and they were crying, they were smiling, you know, it was a whole bunch of emotions and I knew I had to do something, you know, and so I just raised my thumb and gave my thumbs up, and you know, that, that uh, helped them a lot. The golf community was there for Jeremy, and not just his Newman team. Oklahoma State golf coach Mike McGraw invited him to Stillwater, where Jeremy played golf with U.S. amateur champion Peter Uline and PGA pro Ricky Fowler. And one day, another golfer showed up in Jeremy's hospital room. I was in the hospital one day awaiting my transplant, and uh, Tom Watson actually knocked on the door and he said, is this Jeremy Gant's room? I'll never forget, I was half asleep. And my mom's like, Jeremy, wake, wake up. I was just kind of like, uh, is that Tom Watson? He's like, hi Jeremy, I'm Tom Watson. I'm like, oh my gosh. So that was a shock. He sat down and, and uh, talked to me for probably two hours, two or three hours in the hospital. And me and my family, my grandparents just talked to us about not only golf, just life. He was so radically changed physically. He dropped, you know, he doesn't really have any body fat on him at all, and he dropped 30 pounds. And he was so weak and shaky and just had an unbelievable amount of rejection pills that he had to take. I'm on about probably 15 pills a day now, when I was on like 30-ish, and uh, my dosages have gone down. I'm gonna be on pills the rest of my life. I got to go in a room and I got to hold my heart, and they said it was normal heart is about the size of your fist. Well, mine was double the size of my fist. So it was really weird, I've never seen it. It was all gray and yellow, and, and, and they, they sliced it open, you know, and they showed me, you know, this is what a normal heart looks like. This is what yours looks like. And it was just all webby, and they said I could have had a blood clot in there and died at any moment. You know, I was really lucky to be, to be alive. I'm not playing as good as I would expect, but um, you gotta think about what I went through. And to be walking 36 holes right now is, is an honor, and it's a privilege, and I've worked really hard for it. And so I may not be you know, winning tournaments yet, I may not be where I'm at, where I wanna be yet, but I will be there. I feel better than ever. I just ran a mile the other day without stopping, and that's something I could never do before a transplant, and I never knew why. The golf team means everything to me. The coach has been with me since I was a little kid, and he's, he's one of the you know, biggest people in my life. Newman was the best school I could ever ask for. At the hospital, you know, the president came and saw me, the AD came and saw me, you know, half the school came and saw me, and they, they did projects around the school to raise money and, and passed out bracelets, you know, heart for Jeremy, and they did a lot of stuff. A lot of people don't know, but God is what got me through this whole thing. And uh, there'd be nights where I'd be alone, and you know, you'd hear the, the beeping going on, and the nurses coming in, doctors coming in, and I'd be exhausted. I'd have tubes in me, needles in me, and that's the point where you know, I would just break down, you know, start crying. I'd, and there's one night I remember I, I was in so much pain, but I turned on the Passion of the Christ, and I watched it, and I said, if he can go through that, then I can go through this. And from that point on, I was never scared, and I just. I went through it all like a champ. I realized the true meaning of life. And you know, that's to cherish every moment because you never know which day was gonna be your last and which can be your last. And I was fortunate to live on, but I could have been taken from this world just like that. So I'm, I've learned that lesson and it's helped me in my life. Jeremy is headed back for his senior year at Newman as strong as ever and planning for a great season. Good luck, Jeremy. You are a man with an amazing heart. That is all for this edition of On Campus. For more stories about student athletes, visit NCAA.com. Thank you for watching and remember to make the most of your time on campus.